one and all, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all the different people of Earth and beyond, friends, family, allies, and animals, to the mysterious world under our feet of Beth the Bunny and her fabulous friends. Welcome to the transmissions of Rabbit Ears. Well, you know, this is the show, right? This is the show. This is uh, the Rabbit Ears show. It is the Rabbit Ears show. Oh, boy. Welcome to Rabbit Ears. Yeah. As always, uh -huh. I am your host, Beth the Bunny. And with me are <sighs> Master Matt. Yes, Blaze and Magic. We're, we yes. know this, okay, my sweet friend? We know that it's me and Magic. We're always here. We gotta get through this show. Down, I could have a minute to thank Mr. Blaine. I'm sorry, I'm just freaking out a bit. I'm Why just having a moment of freak out. Why? Listen, I got, I got so much stuff to do. I, I've put it all off. I, it's, I've, I've got all these things that I, I was supposed to do, like last week. I was supposed to do them the month before. I was supposed to do them um, like a year ago. I have to I've mend my clothes. I have to do my taxes. I have to. I have to pet the cat. I have so many different things that I need to do today. And, you know, this show, like, I like the show, everybody, but it's kind of cutting into the, my time to get all this stuff done. And every single one of these things has to be done by tomorrow, okay? Sorry. Well, first of all, Mr. Blaze, what you've got to do is take a big, deep breath and just chill out. Okay, man. Thanks. I'm here to help. Oh, man. Maybe I should watch something. What, what do we got today? Well, today we've got The Adventures of Sydney and Truffle. Oh, thank episode goodness. Episode number two. Good, good, good. All right. Let's do it. Let's watch them. Let's do it. Okay? The Adventures of Sydney and Truffles, Episode 2. After being abducted by an alien spaceship, Sydney and Truffles, the dog, find themselves in an empty room. Truffles, where do you think we are? I think we are on the spaceship, but no one is here. Uh, do you think it's empty? Like robots were flying it or something? I don't know. Wait. It sounds like someone's coming. The futuristic door slides open, and behind it is the pilot of the spaceship. <laughs> so you are the famous Sydney. You are much younger and shorter than I imagined. I, I wouldn't say I'm famous. Who are you? I am Gore of the Cheese People. And I was sent to you. I... I don't understand. How could I help you? It's a fair question. You are out flying around all over the galaxy. And he's just a little boy. And my biggest concern is trying not to get fleas. The prophecies work in mysterious ways. So... you don't know? I don't know. Suddenly, the ship is hit by something very heavy and dangerous. What was that? I don't know. Felt like something very heavy and dangerous hit us. We should get up to the controls and see what's happening. Gore, Sydney, and Truffles all run to the main control room. Out the front window, they see a giant space bug. It's a giant space bug! What is it doing? Looks like it's just whacking our ship over and over. Is there anything we can do to stop it? I will try to communicate with it. <laughs> 
Gore turns on the interdimensional space translator bullhorn. Giant space bug. My name is Gore from the planet Cheese. Stop what you're doing right now. Why? Because you are going to damage our spaceship. Why do you keep hitting us anyway? Because I have an itch and it's helping. But you might destroy us. Listen, little tiny alien man. I have an extremely itchy head and I need relief. There has to be another way. The warning signal comes on. What does that sound mean? It means if this giant space bug doesn't stop itching his head on our ship, we are going to crash on that planet down there. Basically, this is my worst nightmare about fleas. Ah, I think that got it. Thanks very much for letting me use your ship to scratch my head. You are very welcome, but it's too late. And we are going down! The damaged ship spins out of control and heads towards the unknown planet below! Welcome back! You know what? I really like... Oh, Sydney and Truffles friends, they're pretty good, you know? I'm glad I came in today. I was even gonna... I was thinking about... I was thinking about calling in sick! To... to rabbit ears! Mr. Blake. Because I have so much to do! I have so much to do! I want to do. Yes! So, but here, I, I'm gonna sing a song. Because I, well, quite frankly, friends, it's my job to sing songs on this show. It's kind of one of my jobs. But, but, you could count it and you can look and then when we've sung a song, you know, first of all, singing might help you, like, and then second of all, like, you can, Check that's something you can check off your to do list, right? Like, that's true. Birds, one spell. One less thing to do. Okay, I was gonna sing Alice the Camel. I was gonna get you to sing it. Well, no, we're all gonna sing it because it's an easy song to sing. It's a fun song, but because I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little different today. Let's say, friends, I'm feeling a little different than usual. Well, maybe I'm feeling pretty regular for myself. Anyways. You are quite different. So Blake. instead of Alice the Camel, and I'm going to sing a song called Gertrude the Frog. What? Okay, but it'll be the same as Alice the Camel. Okay, it's Gertrude, Gertrude the Frog. And the twist at the end is going to stay the same as the Alice the Camel song. Okay, <laughs> everybody, and let's go. Okay, we're, are you ready for this? Gertrude the Frog had five pumps. Gertrude the Frog has five pumps. Gertrude the Frog has five pumps. So go, Gertrude, Gertrude. grow. Go. <laughs> hey, are you guys singing? I'm singing. Oh, well, you're not singing loud enough. Oh, okay. Gertrude the Frog had four humps. Gertrude the Frog has four humps. Gertrude the Frog has four humps. So go, Gertrude, go. Are you even singing? I don't hear you. Maybe it's just because I'm so loud. Am I a bit too loud? Maybe I'm louder than the, the, your average frog. How many, how many humps left? Three. Gertrude the Frog has three humps! Gertrude the Frog has three humps! Gertrude the Frog has three humps! Go, Gertrude, go! Okay, uh, how many humps? Two humps. Two humps, okay. Gertrude the Frog has two humps! Gertrude the Frog has Two humps. Gertrude the Frog has two humps. So go, Gertrude, go. Okay, you were definitely singing. I tricked you by turning off the blaze <laughs> to see what is happening. One hump left. Gertrude the Frog has one hump. Gertrude the Frog has one hump. Gertrude the Frog has one hump. Go, Gertrude, go. <laughs> okay, last, last part. You guys ready? This is where the twist is, friends. Gertrude the Frog has no humps. Gertrude the Frog has no humps. Gertrude the Frog has no humps because Gertrude is a horse. What? 
<laughs> Did it blow your mind, Beth? My mind is blow. Nice. What's next? What's happening up next, my friend? Well, we are going to watch Vahini episode one. We're going to watch Vahini? Yeah, we are. Episode he one. Okay, guys. I'm looking forward to this, and I think, quite frankly, I need some Vahini in my life today. And uh, I think you are definitely going to see why. So, uh... Take it away, Vahini. Thank you. This is Bernard. Bernard's a shy guy. But he knows a lot about breathing. So me and Bernard are going to do some breathing together today. Bernard brought something nice to sit on and he brought some crystals with him. So that's what Bernard's into. Let's check out these crystals. Wow, Bernard, thank you for coming here today. I'm really glad to do some breathing with you. some good breathing. Bernard, how was your breathing? What? What are these? Where did they come from? What are these? What are these? Wow. Let's take a closer look at these. Bernard, we had some special visitors today. Wow, that was really cool. I hope you enjoyed breathing today. Did you breathe from your tummy? Breathing from the tummy is the best way to breathe. You can feel your tummy moving in and out with each breath. Oh, Bernard said he did that. It's a really good way to breathe. Bernard likes to breathe when he's feeling upset. He likes to breathe when he's feeling sad. He likes to breathe when he's happy. It's important to take deep breaths in your belly. Bernard knows that breathing is important for life and for living, but breathing is also important for making us feel better while we're living. seek among the mushrooms you would have to be very small do you have anything under your hat today is it fart yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> oh boy this is magic Okay, here's the today's mail, Beth. Better be good. What is it? What is the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth? And that's from Sarah. Sarah, the coldest temperature ever recorded? Yeah. Do you know what it is? I don't know what it I is. I know what it is. You know what it is? Do you know what it is? I don't know what it is. Tell us what it is, Magic. It was on July 21st. Mm -hmm. So, the middle of summer. Okay, that's weird. 1983. That was the year Magic was born, actually, even. 
in, in Russia and it was 89, like minus 89.2 degrees Celsius. That's insanely cold. That's really cold. I think I would freeze. I'm feeling a little chilly about the whole situation. I haven't quite warmed up to it yet. <laughs> This is a story about the letter E. Elaine is an elephant who made an electronic elk named Edward. Edward the electronic elk looked up at Elaine and asked, Excuse me, but this evening I would like to experience an explosion. Elaine the elephant exclaimed, Explosions are for everyone! This is exciting. And Elaine and Edward took an elevator to explore the entry to the exercise room. Is this where we will see an explosion? Edward asked. Everybody waited, and Elaine easily exploded an enormous empty egg. Don't get too excited, the elephant said. It was only a special effect. The end. <laughs> pun, pun, and Dave. Pun, pun, and Dave. Pun, pun, and Dave. Pun, pun, and Dave. Pun, pun's a goat, and Dave's a kind of fish man. Like to hang out and have a lot of fun. Hey, Pun Pun, how are you, my friend? Well, I'd be better if our car didn't break down on the side of the road on our way to the fair. Yes, it is an unfortunate situation, my friend. I agree with that. Yes, I am I guess we're just lucky that it's not raining outside. Oh, yeah? It would be pretty bad if it was raining. Yeah, when, when it's raining, I always see people under their umbrellas. Oh, yeah? And is that a bad thing? Well, they're always a little under the weather. I love Pun Pun and Dave, by the way. Me too. I think they're really cool, and I think it's really cool to watch their adventures unfold. I think so too. And their puns unfold. Their pun puns. Exactly. Okay, so I'm, I've still got a ton of stuff to do by tomorrow morning, and I'll be honest with you guys, even with Vihini's help, I am still a little stressed out. I'm a bit freaked out. I, is there anything you guys can do to help me well, through Mr. this situation? Well, Mr. Blaze, sometimes when you procrastinate, you need help from your friends. See, I'm just a bunny. I don't know very much about taxes. But Magic, she's pretty dang smart. Mm -hmm. I'd be very happy to help you with your taxes. Like, you help me all the time. Like, if you just need someone to sit and help you work through it, I'm very... I'm You'll help me. Yeah, for sure. Just all you needed to do is ask. Ah, thank you so much, guys. Especially you, Magic. Especially you as well, Beth. <laughs> you're you're welcome. Oh, Beth, you're such a good friend. Okay, I guess that's it for the show. Me and Magic got to run off, do some grown-up stuff, whatever grown-ups do to get stressed out about. Wait, though, before what? we go. Yes, tell me something. Really important fact. Did you know mm -hmm. that avocados and tomatoes are actually fruits, not vegetables? What? It's that, true. That's not so. It's not nuts, it's fruits. <laughs> Come on. Okay, <laughs> have a beautiful day, everybody. Have a good night and have a sweet dreams and whatever you're doing with your life. See you next time. Thanks Bye. for the weird information. Bye. <laughs>